welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-38. On the last episode of the Bard's podcast, the group had been through a tough fight with a group of gnolls and had made camp for the evening. We rejoin the group as the morning sun warms them as they sleep outside and Fargus is startled. What the? called out Fargus Stoutheart as he awoke quickly from his sleep. Swatting a large beetle off his face, he quickly regained his composure and began to look around. Spotting his associates rising, the ranger quickly noticed something was amiss. Where's Karina? Where's Bulger? Who had this guard shift? He jumped up to his feet and quickly drew his sword. The man's reaction caused Cabe, Lady Irena, and Sister Elaine to also jump to their feet and take defensive stances. Peeking through the concealed camp, the group started to hear voices coming closer. Angling their front to the direction, they prepared for battle just as the gnome and the wave broke through the brush. The pair were taken aback at the display of weapons and fire warming the mage's hand. Both pairs stumbled backwards. For the love of Poseidon, what are you guys doing? demanded the squad sailor. The quartet slowly lowered their weapons and extinguished the flame, recognizing the pair. Cabe was fuming and demanded to know why Bulger had left the camp as he had taken third watch. The rest of the group chimed in and the gnome quickly tired of the crabby behavior and had a look of abject distance on his face. At this time, the foursome noted that the pair were carrying several large gray eggs in their arms. Another barrage of questions from the members caused Bulger to turn to the wave and inquire if her associates were always this way. The shrug given caused the sailor to audibly exhale as he put the eggs down and hold his hands up. <sighs> First, he started. If you move out of this copse of trees, you'll notice you can see several hundred yards in every direction. Second, pardon me for thinking of our stomachs and going off to find some breakfast. Third, leave Karina alone. She didn't sleep well and opted to help me forage for food for your growling bellies. The gnome continued to berate the group for their lack of civility and inquired if they wanted to eat or if he should return the eggs to the wild. The grumbling grew silent, but Lady Arena reminded Bolger that a great number of things hide in the plains grass and in the future he should remember that. He pointed out that he had his sling and had not seen anything. In response, he tossed the stone into some brush, which frightened a group of pheasants that took to the sky. Staring dumbfounded at the birds, he pursed his lips and admitted that he didn't realize the creatures were there. Bolger, the plains are not like the sea, explained Sister Elaine. While there are threats in the big water, they seem to be few and far between. Here on land, the threats come in many forms. Some walk on two legs, some on four, and some just slither. As if on cue, a large vulture flew over the group and banked to pass over them again. Others don't even use legs. The gnome thought for a moment and nodded, agreeing that his decision was probably poor and he would refrain from going off without letting someone know. The group was satisfied and Fargus, who was quite hungry, was eyeing the eggs. Asking where the sailor had procured them, he was told that they were about 500 yards from the camp. Hoisting one of the eggs, the ranger pondered what could have laid it before inspiration hit him. Bolger, did you see any creatures that would have laid such large eggs? The blank stare from the man did little to satiate the ranger's curiosity. Do you see me run? Is there sweat on my brow? Whatever laid those things would have caused me to run and scream, as I'm sure it's larger than I, young human. But I saw nothing but a few nests that she and I raided. Cabe Silverton piped up quickly, pointing out that he didn't care where the eggs came from, he was ready to eat. With the fire stoked, they produced a pan from the bag of belongings. Each egg nearly overfilled the frying pan and was enough to feed two adventurers. 
Fargus and Bulger each had a second helping, leaving only one egg left. The group began to break camp, and Karina asked about the last egg. The group looked at each other and pointed out for her to bring it along, they would eat it later. Wrapping the oval item in a tunic she carried, she brought it close to her torso, and as the group continued east towards Colby, she nestled it warmly. An hour into the trip, the group came to a well-traveled dirt trail coming from the south. Fargus examined the trail and looked both ways, but nothing was seen. Well, these are wagon tracks, he said. We must be on the right path. A herd of buffalo was spotted crossing the trail, and the ranger had everyone hang back while they crossed. Bulger was slack-jawed at the size of the creatures and inquired as to what they were. Sister Elaine pointed out that they were called bison and they were very dangerous in such a large pack. She added that where she grew up, there had been large groups of these creatures and the ground would shake when they were running. Bulger eyed the herd and took a step back, standing behind the large human ranger. Guys, <coughs> I feel shaky, uh, <coughs> I feel shaky already, pointed out a concerned Karina. Everyone looked at their feet but felt nothing. Lady Irena agreed with the party and asked her where she felt the tremors. The response of, in my belly, confused the group, but then a cracking noise was heard on the wave's belt line. Uh, guys, said a scared Karina. The group stepped back and grabbed their weapons, looking around, but turned back as Karina gave a shriek and dropped the tunic. Several more loud cracks were heard and the tunic could be seen moving. The scared young woman fumbled for her blade when a chirping noise came from the material. Puzzled, Fargus stepped forward and flipped the fabric away with his longsword. There, under the old tunic, was a reptilian head with a black beak. The egg had matured enough and its occupant had pecked its way out of the gray-colored container. Stepping back from surprise, the group gathered themselves and leaned in, peering at the small creature. Karina dropped to one of her knees and before anyone could warn her, reached out to pet the strange creature. The chirping repeated itself as the newborn brushed up against the waif's hand. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine both called out a warning, but it was too late. Karina then brushed the egg particles off the creature, who happily rubbed up against the young woman's hand and began to coo softly. A broad smile crossed the woman's face, and she helped the creature out of the eggshell completely. The rest of the group noticed that it was a bipedal creature with flaky hair and a black beak. I... I, I think it likes me, beamed a happy Karina. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.